Yeah, so my name is Aska Kumon. Um, I'm a lecturer in the Maths Department at King's College London. And my area of research is number theory, specifically algebraic number theory. What is one exciting thing about being a mathematician? So for me, um, I love teaching. I really enjoy teaching undergraduate students. And I think that maths is a very useful thing to teach. So it feels meaningful, um, whatever I teach them, whether it's calculus and the algebra or, you know, statistics. Um, so I think that's the most rewarding part of being a mathematician. Did you have a role model that motivated you to become a mathematician or someone you look up to? How has this influenced your path? Um, so I guess my first role model was a teacher at school. Um, he encouraged me to do more maths. So in class, we would be doing um, extension questions and really interesting problems outside of class. So that really got me interested in maths. Um, before then, I was good at maths, but I didn't really think of it as something that I want to keep doing. Um, so he was very quite influential in that sense. And then when I got to university, there was a lecturer who was also my personal tutor. He was an lecturer in number theory. And his course was so interesting. He was very, um, I'm not sure in what way he was inspirational, but he inspired me to do number theory and then eventually do a PhD. Reflecting on the challenges in your career, is there any advice for aspiring or early mathematicians who are facing the same obstacles? So I think the first obstacle I faced was when I started my PhD and it's just very different from doing a taught course. So I found it really difficult to kind of structure my day and to motivate myself because, you know, the next deadline is in four years time. So it's, it's quite hard to have short term goals and your supervisor will meet you regularly, but it's not like you have to pass an exam. So the level of motivation is very different. So it's quite difficult to keep studying consistently and keep working. Um, so I learned that I have to take breaks. You know, I can't study like I was for exams. Um, so I learned how to kind of structure my day and my week so that I would work consistently, take breaks so that it was sustainable. Um, and then I think talking to other PhD students was very useful. So, you know, you're not alone in this, right? <laughs> so everyone pretty much goes through the same thing, I think. Not everyone talks about it because it's it's quite demotivating because all of us were probably top students at some point coming into PhD and then suddenly you don't really know how to, um, you don't really know where you are. So you don't know whether you're doing okay or whether you should be doing more studying or do you know enough material, that kind of thing. So just talking to other PhD students and also people who've recently finished their PhD, that's very helpful, I think. And obviously you should talk to your supervisor because um, they are your kind of main source of advice and help and they, they should lead you through the four years. Um, and then after finished, the big challenge is finding a job. Um, it's it getting more and more competitive to find postdocs, especially desirable postdocs like in London or other top universities. Um, so for me, I decided to focus more on teaching because I really like teaching. Research was it's enjoyable, but I didn't really have a passion for it like I did at the beginning of my PhD. So I switched over to teaching um, and there are plenty of teaching jobs around if you are willing to kind of um, in a way, freelance, I think. Um, so you should speak to other students, other math departments in their area. So I think in London, we were quite lucky because there's lots of universities within, you know, 15, 20 minutes of each other. Um, and every university will be looking for TAs. So what I did was I got as much work as I could in order to pay my bills and then doing that for a few years eventually you build up a reputation and then you get opportunities to apply for permanent jobs so it took me quite a while but I have my dream job now and you know um, I think it was all worth it. Thank you Asuka uh, I can relate a lot with this last <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? I no. think especially 
because either you're you're expected to really go into either research full time or go into industry, and teaching is not really something that's kind of promoted. I don't think it's something that you do because you have to as part of your research contract. So I think it's it's becoming more and more prominent because you know students expect good teaching, but when I finished my PhD, it wasn't the case. Is there anything more that you want to uh, say or comment? Um, I guess I should probably talk about being a woman in science. Um, I think that the problem, well, not the problem, but the issue of not enough women going into um, academia is a problem that kind of starts at school. So all of us, you know, even, you know, not just female researchers should make an effort to kind of take part in outreach and encourage young students to think about maths as a career or even maths as a degree. Um, and kind of, if you just have one role model, I think it makes a huge difference. And teachers at schools don't necessarily have the time or the resources to, you know, run extra classes to inspire students about maths outside of a GCSE curriculum. So I think outreach is very, very important and we should all take part, in my opinion. I think not everyone's keen about outreach, but I think it's very important. If we want good researchers in 20 years time, we need to inspire the school children of now.